Hello, brothers and sisters. I've been asked to give a talk by Bishop today. And um, the topic of my talk is a question, which is, why does Satan seek to destroy the Lord's work? Um, in order for me to really answer or try to answer this question, um, I need to give a little bit of a background um, to the role of Satan um, in terms of the Lord's work and why he seeks to destroy it. Um, and this um, goes back to the war in heaven where we all lived um, with our father in heaven before we came to earth. And um, whilst we were there with him, he presented us with um, the plan of salvation, which essentially allowed us to come to earth and to gain a body, to gain experiences, to have families, to be able to enjoy um, all of the Lord's creations and our bodies to their fullest, and then return to live with him with the knowledge and experience that we have gained. And this was a plan that excited us all and made us feel great joy. Um, and one um, particular person wanted to take control of this plan and not allow us to have any agency to allow us to choose for ourselves um, whether or not we obeyed our Father in heaven. And this was Satan or Lucifer. And we know that he had um, sought to have all of the power and all of the glory for himself, which our Heavenly Father was not happy with. Um, because of the choice that he made to um, try and seek that control, um, he and um, a third of the host of heaven, um, so roughly a third of um, our Heavenly Father's children were cast out with Satan. And because of this, um, they seek our misery and they seek our downfall in a lot of ways. So in order to um, destroy the Lord's work, um, Satan tries to control us and tries to tempt us and to put things into our paths along life's way that make our lives difficult. So why does he do this? So we're in the um, war in heaven, we learned that Satan wanted to seek um, control, to gain control over the plan of salvation. He wants us to have misery because we do have our bodies and because we are able to experience so many different wonderful things like joy and happiness and love and families and all of the wonderful things that come with being here on earth. Um, and because of all of those things that we do have the opportunity to have, he wants us to miss out and he wants us to be captive in um, all sorts of wicked ways. And so he um, tries to diminish or he tries to destroy some of the best experiences that mortality and that having a body um, offers us. Um, but however, even though these things sound, sound quite dark and quite, quite evil, um, we do learn in the scriptures that this was the Lord's plan. He wanted us to be able to experience good from evil um, without having that opposition, without having temptations, we wouldn't have the blessing of learning what it was to have the good things in our lives. I want to read some scriptures to you now, which are in um, 2 Nephi, chapter 2, and the first verse is 16, and I'll also read verse 27. So verse 16 says, Wherefore the Lord God gave unto man that he should act for himself. Wherefore man could not act for himself, save it should be that he was enticed by one or the other. Wherefore men are free according to the flesh. And all things are given them which are expedient unto man. And they are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death, according to the captivity and power of the devil. For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. And these scriptures really beautifully illustrate to me how important it is that we do have um, Satan as part of this plan. Our Heavenly Father didn't think of this as a backup. This was always part of his plan to have the opposition and to have that temptation as Eve faced in the Garden of Eden. We know that Eve was presented with the choice to either um, procreate and have a family, but in order for her to do that, she had to partake of the fruit. And so the choice was to be the remain in the garden or to take of the fruit and to be able to enjoy all of the full potential that mortality could offer her. And because of the choice that she then made, it allowed us to be able to exist, to have our bodies and to have all of the other wonderful blessings that come with that. So talking about how Satan seeks to destroy the Lord's work, this can also have a really positive impact in our lives. 
it gives us all the opportunity to exercise agency thanks to his role in the creation. It also allows us to prove ourselves and to exercise our faith and to gain testimonies that help us to build the knowledge that we need to return to our Heavenly Father. It provides also a refiner's fire for our souls. So even though life has its many challenges that already come from, from being mortal beings, it also presents us with different temptations and different struggles that we will all face on a day-to-day -day basis. But these things are all there for our good. They allow us to be able to resist the temptation, to rely on the Lord and to always remember that he is above all and he sees all and knows all. Um, this is um, a specific topic that reminded me a lot of our, our prophet Joseph Smith and the restoration of the church. Before he prayed in um, the sacred grove, he was facing a lot of um, confusion and he had a lot of issues with finding the right faith for him. And immediately before he prayed, he faced um, some very serious opposition and um, potential destruction from Satan and from his um, forces. And I wanted to share a, a little quote with you from Spencer W. Kimball. Bear with me as I find that. And what Spencer W. Kimball was talking about was how, um, how Satan felt so threatened by the marvelous work that Joseph Smith was going to undertake. And the quote is here. He says, when Joseph Smith knelt in solitude in that silent forest, his earnest prayer brought on a battle royale which threatened his destruction. For centuries, Lucifer with unlimited dominion had fettered men's minds. He could ill afford to lose his satanic hold. This threatened his unlimited dominion. It reminds us that even within the account of the first vision, the powers of darkness had preceded the light. There had to be a struggle and there had to be um, a, a level of temptation before um, the most wonderful and most glorious vision could could unfold and it helps us to remember that um, the adversary is always aware of of the great work that the Lord is trying to do and he will seek to undermine it at every step. It reminds me of um, the quote that Joseph Smith made in Joseph Smith history where he says it seems as though the adversary was aware from a young age that he was destined to prove a disturber and annoyer in his kingdom that made me feel quite excited and quite thrilled at the idea that Joseph Smith was a disturber and an annoyer of Satan's kingdom and all that it stands for. And it made me think of what I could do or how I could become a disturber and an annoyer of Satan's kingdom too. In order to answer that question, I found an answer in Doctrine and Covenants section 10 verse five. And that verse reads, Pray always that ye may come off conqueror, yea, that you may conquer Satan, and that you may escape the hands of Satan, sorry, that escape the hands of the servants of Satan that do uphold his work. And for me, that just um, testifies of how important it is that we pray, that we can use prayer as a powerful tool to help us to evade any temptations and overcome all the obstacles in our life. I know that these things are true and I'm so grateful for um, the, the knowledge that I have, that I have agency, that as I choose to do what is right and as I choose to follow um, our Saviour's example and as I strive every single day to repent and seek forgiveness for the times that I fall and then strive to always try again and to partake of the sacrament, to renew my covenants and to always commit to those promises I've made that I will be able to overcome Satan and that I will try my very best to be an annoyer and a disturber of his kingdom. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.